We know that the 4680 equipped made in Texas Tesla Model Y structural battery pack is made up of 828 individual 4680 battery cells. And we also now have some credible energy density estimates for these battery cells. So with this data, as well as what we know about the anode and cathode chemistry of these 4680 batteries, I want to show why I believe that this standard range all wheel drive Model Y is indeed a long range Model Y in disguise. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. While Gigafactory Texas is producing some Model Ys with 2170 batteries in a non-structural battery pack, they are also producing uh, 4680 equipped Model Ys with structural battery packs. But for the last several months, many people, including myself, have been trying to figure out why this uh, 4680 equipped Model Y only has an EPA rated range of around 279 miles versus a long range version, which has a range of around 330 miles. Now, while I don't have official confirmation and thus I can't be 100% sure on this, um, I believe there's enough evidence now to build a really strong case for the fact that this standard range all wheel drive Model Y with 279 miles very likely has the same size uh, battery capacity as the long range all wheel drive Model Y somewhere around 82 kilowatt hours. If my theory is indeed correct, and I'll show why I believe it is, this would mean that the 279 mile range is a software limited number. So that's my theory. Now I wanna dive into some of the evidence that I believe points to this theory being correct. Now logic would suggest that if you have two Model Y variants, one with 279 miles of range and another with 330 miles of range, that the shorter range version would have a smaller battery pack. But is this the case? Now, if we go to an official EPA document, Tesla's application for a new Model Y variant, the what I'm calling the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y, you can see there that I've highlighted the recharge event energy, which shows how many kilowatt hours were needed to completely charge up this pack. And it shows a recharge event of 76.533 kilowatt hours. However, as I've talked about in the past, that's actually measuring how many kilowatt hours were dispensed from the charger to the battery pack, not necessarily how many um, kilowatt hours were actually stored in the battery pack because there's actually somewhere around a 10 to 11% charging loss when you charge an electric vehicle. So for instance, using this EPA data and also showing examples um, of the performance all-wheel drive and the long-range all-wheel drive recharge event also from this EPA document, you can see that with a recharge event of roughly 76.533 kilowatt hours, that would lead me to believe that the usable battery capacity of this standard range all wheel drive Model Y is 68 kilowatt hours. Now, if this battery pack is indeed smaller, and this is not just a software limited amount of a larger battery pack, this would lead you to believe, especially based on what Tesla has talked about um, when it comes to the benefits of the structural battery pack and reducing the mass of the vehicle and reducing the mass of the battery pack, this would sure lead you to believe that this Model Y variant should be considerably lighter than the long range all wheel drive version of the Model Y. However, when you look at the EPA documents, this standard range all wheel drive Model Y is actually quite heavy at 4,356 pounds. And if you compare this to the 2170 equipped performance and long range all wheel drive model wise, you can see that the weight is very similar. And in fact, the weight is only seven pounds less than the long range all wheel drive model Y that has an 82 roughly kilowatt hour battery pack. Now, of course, there's two ways you can explain this kind of weight difference. One would be to assume that the energy density of this battery pack and the cells themselves of the 4680 batteries are very low and it's not very efficient. Maybe the battery cells themselves have a very low energy density number and thus um, a smaller battery pack weighs nearly the same as a larger battery pack with 2170 battery technology. However, based on what we know from the limiting factor and his analyzing of a 4680 battery that he got into his hands, um, while this was a first generation, uh, pretty early on 4680 battery cell, he found that that battery cell had a nickel manganese cobalt 811 battery chemistry, which is very energy dense. So that really kind of negates the theory 
that the 4680 batteries that are used in the structural battery pack have a very low uh, amount of energy density. Thus, a very low pack energy density number like 150 watt hours per kilogram, which would explain this kind of weight difference if this battery pack is indeed a small 68 kilowatt hour battery pack. This doesn't make sense based on what we know about these first generation 4680 battery cells. In addition, if you have a 68 kilowatt hour battery pack that contains 828 battery cells, that would mean that each one of these 4680 battery cells only contained around 82.13 watt hours of energy. And if that were the case, we know that each 4680 battery cell weighs around 355 grams. Thus, that would lead us to believe that the energy density of these 4680 battery cells would be a very low 231.4 watt hours per kilogram, which would be considerably less than what we know the current 2170 battery is. However, what we know so far about the anode and cathode chemistry of these first generation 4680 batteries, it doesn't seem to line up with a very low cell level energy density number somewhere in the 230 watt hours per kilogram range because uh, Jordan from the limiting factor established that these first generation 4680 batteries, at least the battery cell that he had analyzed had a nickel manganese cobalt 811 chemistry, which is very energy dense. And he did establish that the anode was a graphite anode without the use of silicon. And even while silicon does help increase the energy density of battery cells, even without it, the watt hours per kilogram of these battery cells should not be low somewhere like in the 230 watt hours per kilogram range. Uh, for instance, because if you look at this chart, which is found in this uh, Inside EVs article. They show in this chart that an 80% nickel-based cathode, which would match a uh, NMC811 uh, battery chemistry with a purely graphite anode, they gave a watt hours per kilogram estimate of between 250 to 280 watt hours per kilogram. They show some of these next generation battery cells with silicon added and they show the energy density increasing from there. But even without the silicon, once again, a watt hours per kilogram, somewhere around 230 watt hours per kilogram, doesn't seem to make sense with this kind of battery chemistry. However, similar numbers to what CATL was estimating for this uh, 80% nickel cathode chemistry with a graphite anode, they seem to jive very well with other estimates that we have from various sources. I've mentioned this data in the past, but based on three different sources, it appears like the cell level energy density numbers for these battery cells is somewhere between 260.6 watt hours per kilogram up to nearly 300 watt hours per kilogram. So it's somewhere in between there, likely somewhere there in the middle. Thus, if these estimates are indeed correct with some basic math, you can see that the actual capacity of this 4680 equipped Model Y very well may be much larger than 68 kilowatt hours, as would be suggested by the recharge event data that I mentioned earlier. And very likely, if you do the math here with this kind of watt hour per cell range, that would lead me to believe that the battery size of this Model Y is actually somewhere close to 82 kilowatt hours of capacity, if not exactly 82 kilowatt hours. Thus, if the battery pack capacity is roughly the same, the range should be roughly the same. And the range of this Model Y version should not be 279 miles unless Tesla limited that by software locking it. So I think it's pretty exciting. I think there's a lot of evidence for that, but there's also an interesting thing to talk about, and that's what happens when the energy density of these battery cells increases with generation two and generation three 4680 battery cells. Um, that could actually lead this Model Y version, a structural battery pack equipped Model Y with 4680 battery cells, I think maybe sometime by around 2024 or so, we could have a 400 mile range Model Y version on the market. I've mentioned this Troy Tesla-like tweet on Twitter in the past, but based on a rumor that was shared by Troy, Tesla is planning on increasing the amount of watt hours in each 4680 battery cell um, in the next couple years. And by 2024, according to this rumor, Tesla could increase the uh, watt hours per battery cell to somewhere around 118 watt hours. Thus, if that is the case, you can see that with these uh, watt hour increases, I believe it could be very possible that a Model Y equipped with 828 cells could have a battery capacity close to 98 kilowatt hours. And based on some basic math, a battery capacity somewhere close to 98 kilowatt hours could lead you to a range of nearly 400 miles. 
Now, this, of course, leads us to the question, if Tesla increases the energy density of these battery cells and increases the watt hours per 4680 battery cell, couldn't they just uh, have less battery cells in a structural battery pack instead of increasing the range all the way up to, like, say, 400 miles? Um, somebody correct me if I'm wrong on this, but from what I understand on this, a structural battery pack needs all of the 828 4680 battery cells to fully form the necessary structural integrity that this battery pack needs. And I assume that gaps would have a negative effect on the stability and the structural elements of this pack. Thus, I believe that a 4680 equipped Model Y with a structural battery pack will maintain 828 battery cells in the future, even as energy density increases. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Do you think I'm right on this or do you think I'm wrong? Either way, I'd love to hear from you. And also, if you work in the battery industry and you have any insights that you'd like to share with me, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. And also, I want to say a special thank you to the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.